Welcome to this WISIS training module for WISIS coordinators, responsibilities and reporting. In this module, you will learn how to do the following. You'll manage user access and license allocation, which involves creating and removing user access, unblocking users and resetting passwords. You will also learn how to perform the reporting functions for your service outlet. Managing user access and licenses. All user administration is done on the admin page users tab. The list presented shows your current users and when they last logged on. By changing the view selection to non-current users, you can view users who are inactive. Let's go back and view the current users. The first step in setting up a new user is to ensure you have an available license. The information in the text box above the user listing states the number of WISIS licenses allocated to your service outlet or workgroup by the Youth Support Program team in alignment with your service agreement. When a user is allocated to a workgroup, a license is assigned to that user and the number of spare licenses for that workgroup is reduced by one. This example shows that we have in youth workgroup Y 50 named users. This is the number of licenses allocated to that youth workgroup. Out of that number, we have 20 spare licenses we can use. If you have no spare licenses, the first step is to review the list of current users and see if there's anybody on that list who is unnecessarily allocated to a workgroup. I'll show you later in this training module how to remove the person from the workgroup so you can free up a license. If you require additional licenses, please contact the Youth Support Program team and discuss this requirement. Let's continue. Creating a new user. Click on Add New User. The Add New User form will appear. The username I'm assigning is Albert Einstein. And I'm putting a dot in between the username and the first name and family name as that's recommended. So Albert as a first name and Einstein as a surname. Please note that the username is case sensitive. Enter his email address. The reception messages don't apply to WISIS, so there's no need to select a value for this field. Your service outlet name will display in the default cluster field. The temporary password that I'm assigning Albert will conform to the password rules, which are Minimum of eight characters, minimum of one uppercase letter, minimum of one lowercase letter, and one number. Select the change password checkbox. This will force the user to change their password on their first login. And click save. Be sure to notify the new user of their temporary password. The next step is to assign Albert to the correct workgroup. Before we do, note that Youth Workgroup Y still has 20 spare licenses, even though we've just added a user. We haven't allocated them to a workgroup yet. So when we do, that number will reduce. So allocating them to a workgroup, New work group Y. Again, this is a training environment, so the list that you will be presented with in production will be your service outlet name. If we did not allocate a user to a work group, that user will not be able to log into WISIS. So it's only when we allocate a user to a work group that the license number. Uh, spare license number reduces by one because we've used up a license and that user can now log in. So when I press save, 
we currently have 19 spare licenses now. The next step is to decide what role this user will perform in WISIS. It defaults to normal user. The two options configured for youth support are normal user and coordinator. The normal user role is for youth workers and case workers. The WISIS coordinator role is able to perform additional advanced functions such as user administration, reporting, merging duplicate records, etc. As Albert is a youth worker, his profile will be assigned a normal user role. Albert is an operational member of the team, so I'm keeping the operational checkbox ticked. Complete the process by saving. Unblocking users. When users lock themselves out, it's usually because they've forgotten their password. A WISIS coordinator can unblock them and reset their password. Notice the Forgot Password help link on the login page is another avenue for users if the coordinator's not immediately available. So I'm just making sure we are on the Admin page at Users tab. And we need to click on their name from the Users list to open the Edit User form. And the user today who's locked themselves out is called Normal User. So we click on that and then scroll back up to bring up their record. Untick the user blocked. Checkbox. Now if the user remembers their password, then we don't need to touch their password and reset it. But Chances are they've forgotten their password, otherwise they wouldn't have locked themselves out in the first place. So we're going to issue them a temporary password. Conforming to the rules of minimum of eight characters, minimum of one upper case, one lower case, and one number. And I'm going to tick the change password checkbox to ensure that the user sets their own personal password when logging in. I'm going to press save and that user has now been unblocked and their password's been reset. So I will need to now go and advise the user of their temporary password. Removing user access. An important function of a WISIS coordinator is to remove users from being able to access WISIS when they are no longer required or authorised to access it. There's three options for restricting user access to WISIS. Blocking them, removing them from a work group, and removing their user record. Let's have a look at these options. I open the user's record by ensuring we're on the admin page in the users tab and we will find our user let's see if test is free no we'll bring up training 8 as a training account you can see this person is in many work groups Option 1. If you wish to temporarily remove access, tick the user blocked checkbox. They are still allocated a license, but they are unable to log in until you untick that box. So to do that, we just press save, and they are now blocked. For option 2, you can remove a user from a work group by clicking the red remove cross. So if I click that, remove them from the work group, we've freed up a license and they're unable to log into that work group. If we remove them from all work groups, the user is unable to log into WISIS. You would choose this option over the user blocked method when you want to free up a license and allocate it to somebody else. 
This method keeps the user's details on the current user list. For option 3, if you want to permanently remove their access, you can remove their user record. To do this, ensure the user is not allocated to any workgroups. When they're not, the Remove User button appears at the bottom of the form. Clicking the Remove User button moves the person from the current users to the non-current users list. Even though their user record is deleted, all references to them in the client data is retained. For example, all of their case notes will still contain all references to them. So, just to demonstrate, Training 8 is in our current users list. If we click Remove User, we get a note to say that users, the user has been removed, but all references are retained. If we go and select the non-current users list, there is Training 8 appearing. When choosing between the options of removing a user from your workgroup and removing the user record, consider the impact of retaining users on the current users list. If the user is likely to become active again in the near future, then it may be more efficient to remove them from your workgroup whilst they're not active users. The user record will still be available to easily activate upon their return. If, however, the user has left your organisation or is unlikely to require access in the future, then removing their account will assist in keeping your current users list relevant and manageable. Reporting The Youth Support Client Information System, WISIS, includes a report engine that enables you to generate a wide variety of aggregated reports and data lists to assist with organisational management and reporting to stakeholders. There's a number of distinct tabs within the reports page. And these identify the different reporting categories. They are reports, lists, financial, referrals, groups, custom and results. The reports tab is where the majority of reports will be run. We'll come back to this shortly. The list tab allows you to generate the detailed list of records used in the corresponding report. The financial tab allows you to generate reports based on the information entered into the payments tab within the persons page. The Referrals tab allows you to generate reports for, for referrals sent to and received from other services. The Groups tab allows you to generate reports based on the group information entered into the Groups page. The Custom tab provides standard functionality for those wishing to pursue advanced reporting capabilities. The Results tab is where you view reports and lists that you've generated. The Reports tab provides access to standard reports together with a suite of DCC SDS reports. That's in the report type. The DCC SDS reports have been defined to extract de-identified data to support performance reporting requirements. The DCCSDS performance report collates the performance reporting figures to be entered into the online acquittal support information system, OASIS, by service outlets quarterly. The format, I'll just select it. The format of the performance report it is exactly the same as required to be entered into OASIS thereby streamlining reporting obligations for service providers. An overview of these reports is included in section 20.1.6 of the WISIS user, user manual for your reference. Let's run a report. 
We're going to run the DCCSDS performance report. So I have selected that report type for the performance report. For the service outlet, I will select all services. And the period of interest is this quarter. Generate report. Note the report number in the message that appears on screen. 3153. To view the report, we go to the Results tab. We note 3153 is showing in the list. Go to the, oops, sorry, we go over to the right and click on View Report. If you want to export this report to Excel, click the Excel icon at the top of the page. And then you'd open it or save it. But we won't do that here. We go back to the results list by clicking Results. To keep my list of reports to a manageable level, I'm now going to delete this report. That completes this module. Let's review what we have covered. We have learned the importance of managing our license allocation when considering user access. We have learned how to create and remove users. We've learned how to unblock users and reset their passwords. And finally, we've touched on the key aspects of creating reports for our service outlet. Thank you for watching this WISIS training module. There are a number of support options available for you. The WISIS user manual provides detailed instructions for using WISIS to support service delivery for youth support services. This is a helpful reference and can be accessed by the link on the login page, taking you to the department's youth support web page. Guidance for using features not specifically tailored for WISIS is available via online help. If you experience any problems with WISIS, please contact the Info Exchange support team by phone or email using the details on this slide. If you have a practice related query, please contact the Youth Support Program by email at cismailbox at communities.qld.gov.au. Thank you.